Is Matthew M. Williams a good designer? Is he just a Kanye soy boy? Frankly, I don't know. Pretty much all of my consumption of his work is through glimpses on social media. I barely know the guy, and I'm sure you probably don't either. So what did he do to get hired at a high fashion institute like Givenchy? I don't look at Givenchy as one of the greats really, but they're not just hiring anybody. Never mind, that's that's brave. I looked at every Elite show available on Vogue Runway from Fall Winter 15 until now to see how much value I found in his work. Yes, me. Fashion sucks. That's the new name for the channel. What do you think? Quick recap about Mr. MMW. He never received any formal education. In fact, he was rejected from Parsons and instead chose to play football or soccer to him and you Americans. He was very influenced by streetwear rap and during his time in Europe, techno music as well. His whole entry into fashion was through connections that led him to Kanye. It seems like if you're from America, all you gotta do to make it is be very extroverted and party a lot in a major city. He spent many years working with Kanye creatively. He had his own DJ streetwear brand, Bin Trill, with these fellow Kanye soy boys. During this time, I didn't know this, but he dated Lady Gaga and helped her with her costume design. Impressing Kanye is a golden ticket. So basically, the guy got his design experience on the job a lot of the time. It does feel like a lot of luck, like he met Gaga at a sushi place through mutual friends. Obviously, this didn't all take place over a few years. He first met Kanye in 2007 and had already been doing some interning and stuff before that. I don't want to discredit his work ethic, so let me instead discredit his design, or be impressed by it. I want to not be biased against him. What I've seen on socials is genuinely not bad. So what did that 10 years of experience culminate into? Alix or 1017 Alix 9SM. It sounds a lot cooler than what it means. To be honest, I don't know what it could mean to make it cool. I think just not revealing what it meant would have been better. Could have been like those mysterious construction site numbers. What do they mean? Anyway, let's start looking at the collections. Now I had 22 Alix collections to go through, so I'll only be going through the key aspects of course. Most collections are just full of filler anyway. So given his previous design work for Lady Gaga, Matthew started off doing women's wear. His first collection was Autumn Winter 15 and he decided from the get-go he was going to be one of those mostly all-black designers. No hate to those guys. Well, a little hate. I like black as much as the next guy, but colour is a must for me to get the full potential out of clothes. Not everything has to be colourful, but not all black. I get that it's tricky to do right and tastefully. It's his, it's his first collection, come on guys, give, give him a break. I see the techno rave inspired looks with the leather, black and rips, although it's a bit all over the place. You got a beanie here which I honestly find atrocious. This is a sin from the snake print shoes to glittery crotch. I really just can't see the connection between some of these fits outside the black. I think the only noteworthy thing to take is the roller coaster belt buckle is present from the very first collection. Wonder if he'll keep these down the line. This is just a glimpse into the brain of MMW. He clearly has many sources of inspo to draw from, which I like. Let's see how he grows. Skipping to fall winter 16 as it's where Vogue actually starts, I had to really dig for that first collection. Quick question, why is cum involved in this sentence? Thanks. Williams made it to the final for the LVMH prize this year, and put a particular emphasis on quality, making most of his clothes in Italy, in turn making his clothing retail very high. This season's clothing looked like it was for the classy punk businesswoman. I actually like the outfits that combined counterculture elements with modern formal wear. Even stuff like oversizing the flares in an otherwise acceptable work outfit. This was fun, but not appropriate. No pun intended. I think it's a pun, I had to look up what a pun is, and I'm not sure if it counts. He's trying to blend all these different aspects in such an obvious way, I think a more subtle approach leads to something that's easier on the eyes. Not a skatey with this top, or bright pink ripped jeans with such a formal coat. It's too much of a contrast and looks cheap. You're trying to target very rich people here, Matthew. I know they have bad taste, but at least appeal to their bad tastes. This is screaming subversive luxury streetwear startup. Our first spring collection, Spring Summer 17, looks to bring in the nightlife feel to it. I like how he uses one model for these lookbooks, trying to show how an Alex woman would dress on their wardrobe. However, I don't believe this would ever be one woman's wardrobe but maybe a raunchy 16 year olds. Like these are teenagers outfits. This must be a joke. I don't see the continuity from the last couple collections. The last three fits hit more for me, but man, lose the hat. Moving on, Matthew can't help but show how varied of an individual he is. More pink and black, and Alex staple apparently. They don't show that on social media. Bicycle shorts, and lots of metal doodads. The Resort 18 collection has some interesting ideas and cuts. Again, the rebellious rich woman vibe works for Alex. I think drop the streetwear stuff, and you got a much more cohesive vision. This last more masculine suit is great at subverting expectations towards typical women's formal wear. And that's sort of what he does with Spring Summer 18, although I don't think this collection was very good outside the last two airy dresses. This is such an unflattering silhouette, to me drop crotch pants are hard to do right and I don't think they work outside its hippie heritage. For Fall Winter 18 he finally cut the crap, stuck to a subversive masculine tailoring for the classy rebellious woman, and it works more times than it has in the past. Skinnier looks are harder to pull off than oversized stuff in my opinion as oversized stuff just naturally creates interesting shapes, but I think it suits what Alex is going for. This is a fucking mess, why? He, he 
throws in random hats. Her hair is red. That does not mean she should wear a red hat. Ugh. Shout out to the guys that have stuck with me. More of my audience is male, actually, so this video is not a good move for me. But the menswear was introduced alongside the women's wear with Spring Summer 19. So party's getting started. Please don't click off. In fact, Elise debuted at Paris Fashion Week with this 53 look collection. First off, pray for my dude. He was put through it for some reason. Regardless, this show introduced a load of new things and things to know Alix for. The Vibram or Vibram soles. Lots of these buckles and chest rigs. What a name. There was a lot of just tacky prints. The bright lime and snake print is not it for me. And he went back to streetwear. Oh, he went back to streetwear. This collection is, again, my biggest critique of Alix so far. Just a mix of everything. And when you try to do everything well, you don't do anything well. Leather pants and boots with a palace looking fleece hoodie. I get he has this sporty background, but his sporty stuff is the weak point for me. Here he is throwing in this hipster hiking outfit. This collection was a major step back in my analysis of Alix and his progression. Now maybe his collection was poorly received at the time as well. Vogue sure doesn't seem to think so. Or fall winter collections are just easier to do. More clothes and layering tend to equal more complexity in shapes. But this show was much better. These leather suits look delightful. The finish is amazing. You can really see the quality and he more tastefully blended in aspects of sportswear. The ponchos were great. I think darker colors suit Alix his vibe better and he just presented classier looks with his collection. I honestly liked it. Prints are hard to do well in my opinion. These are better than the snake stuff though. With spring summer 20, it seems Matthew has just abandoned following seasonal themes, expecting you to wear this stuff in summer. Another thing he's abandoned is the streetwear. This collection feels like it has a target audience and is hitting it perfectly. That mix of upper class tackiness and overpriced modesty with subversive tailoring and features. I'd even commend the outerwear for not being overly extra. My biggest problem now is his color palettes. The black outfits are black outfits, whatever. But I can't get behind black and brown, orange and brown, possibly two of my least favorite colors with brown. Purple and black, not everything goes with black. I'd pretty much say the same stuff about the Fall Winter 20 collection, except the colors got better. Keeping it youthful but classy, Matthew found a way to incorporate that rebelliousness in a more subtle way for sure. In Spring Summer 21, even his snake print got better. He put out mostly refined, expensive looking pieces with splashes of flamboyance. Now his clothes actually looked expensive. They had that photoshopped feel to them, similar to what I see in Balenciaga's clothes. It seems like Mr. Williams had found his niche. This was the sort of stuff I knew a leaks for. And while I didn't find a lot of it to be my thing, I still respected the vision. For Fall Winter 21, he had a lot less all black, but still monochromatic looks. The tailoring wasn't as interesting, but there were definitely a lot more textures present, which made up for it. I hope he doesn't start opting for more minimalist looks now. With Spring and Summer 22, we saw the unfortunate passing of Matthew M. Will. I'm kidding, just keeping on your toes. Spring Summer 22 was disappointing. He stopped with the maximalism. I wonder where he got the idea for this. He just did a load of generic monochromatic looks. What happened to the interesting cuts and tailoring? I get he went for a beachy spring summer collection, but this doesn't feel like the elixir he had been building up to. He had bikinis next to full on black leather trench coats. So what did he do most recently for fall winter 22? Oversizing. Lots of oversizing for a brand that did mostly and was sort of known for not being oversized. Not always skinny stuff, but never as big as this. It seems Matthew came out with his take on Demna style. The most interesting thing was definitely the silhouettes, which relied heavily on the clothes being oversized, not actual tailoring. We did not see much of a return of Alix's signature maximalist tailoring features. We did see pretty generic rubber boots and corsets, though. So how does Ma so how does MMW rank? Is he S? Is he F? Well, I think he's mid. Let me explain. From looking through all of his collections, it's just so inconsistent. There's obviously no message or real theme that he explores with his clothes season to season. They're just there to look good for a certain demographic, which is fine, but I'm more into clothes that have a bit more substance. That's just me. That's not a fault with his design necessarily. It's just how he views clothes. Again, we have different preferences. It's a shame to see him hop on the Valenciaga trend train recently. I picked up some trends throughout his collections, but I mostly felt like he was forging his own path. He had a lot of influences that he drew from which weren't the most unique, but I still thought that Elix had found its footing around Spring Summer 20. All I can hope is he goes back to what I think he did well, which was his subversive but subtle, classy and rebellious tailored looks. But obviously I do not matter to him, which is fine. Maybe you can return my call sometimes, Matthew. That would be decent of you. I think design school could have done some good, maybe saved you the first couple of years of experimenting, but I get it, you'd rather be with Kanye and Gaga. Regardless, Matthew M. Williams, good at times is what I'd say about him. I see why Givenchy approached him for the role. Probably weren't many takers, but he has that generic high fashion house appeal, and he seems to be mostly delivering that to them. Hey, let me know what you thought of the video and format. This channel is still just starting, so I'd love the input. Thank you for watching and subscribe for more.